Tiny castings can be a huge challenge. Look at this. Not too difficult, right? Yeah? Look how thin that is. <laughs> That's paper thin. Casting an object like this poses all kinds of challenges. The first is that we have to scale the sprue and the vent to the size of the object. It all has to match up. So I found this piece of coated cardstock. It's very thin. It's plastic coated, so that's good. So let's see if we can use that to create our vent and sprue. Now I don't want to cut the object. Just want to see if I can trace around with a sharp exacto. All right, so we have the little pieces of paper that are gonna be our thing. About like that, about like that. There's our sprue and there's our vent. Fire up the waxer because of course, it's gonna be our old buddy sticky wax to the rescue. We'll get everything nice and hot. I really do wanna make a clean connection because I don't wanna mung up the original and I don't wanna have to have a lot to clean up. Then I make the casting. Just coat this paper with this wax. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Now we'll build the base up of the sprue where it's gonna to attach to the funnel. So if we do everything right, we'll have a pretty fine edge along there. Very easy to clean up, but we'll have a strong enough sprue to hold the whole assembly together. That's the idea here. No matter what, that is gonna be a very delicate connection between those parts. So when we pour this, boy, we're gonna wanna pour it very, very carefully. And we pour the rubber because man, oh man, this is a very thin connection. Get some sticky wax laid onto this funnel so we know where that's gonna attach. Okay, and maybe attach it, go so far as to attach it. I'm very mindful of how delicate that connection is. I'm gonna really treat it with kid gloves because boy, I don't wanna break it off at this point. Start all over again, I do that. You don't wanna connect the vent at the bottom of the bowl of the funnel. You wanna connect the vent to the top of the funnel. That way the vent remains open even when the funnel has a lot of resin in it. I would say that we are ready to pour some rubber. All right, I mixed up and backed a bunch of rubber I want to pour it very much from the bottom up because I want to get all of the details in that little badge, all the lettering. So I'm going to pour from the bottom and make sure that the rubber rises up through those letters. Just doing that perfectly, just flowing upwards and in theory pushing out all the air. People ask me how I know how much rubber to mix up and the answer is I just eyeball it most of the time. Just do it on a wing and a prayer and experience. And sometimes I'm dead on, as I am now. And sometimes I have to do a topper batch. And sometimes I have to add a little bit of rubber to the chunky stash. All right, let's let that sit overnight. We'll cut it open and see what we get. 24 hours later, this thing is ready to go. Let's cut it. Little cosmetic trim of the mold, make it look a little prettier. Let's see if we can pull out the funnel. Should pop right out, and it did. Everything came out, look at that. Very nice. Brand new X-Acto blade, razor sharp. Also very helpful. Cutting jaggy and stretching the rubber. Because the part is so thin and so delicate, we wanna find the top. I'm cutting down it perfectly, down the side, the skinny side. Cutting clean right at the part. Should come out now. It did, came right out. I'm just using a single rubber band to hold this mold closed. That's all it's gonna take. On the first casting, I'm just gonna do a regular pour. But the challenge is that the part is so thin that the surface tension of the resin entering the cavity could possibly overcome gravity and it just won't fill. There's a distinct possibility of that and that's one of the reasons I made the well pretty large in the, in the funnel so that I could pour this in and if we have to, on the second pour, We'll use vacuum to pull the resin into the cavity. But let's make the first pour and see how we do. All right, mixed up some res, and let's see if we can pour it. I shall be very interested to see if it comes up the spout. So far it has not. But up, oh, up, oh, looks like it might have. <laughs> All right. 
Looks like it's coming. Yep. All right. I'm going to fill it. Cool. Let's run this into the tank and we'll see how she does. Quick check of the witness cup. Ready to go. Let's pull it. All right. Time to see what we've got. And this is always the fun. Let's see what disasters await us, if any. Ooh, it might be too soft to pull. Yep, I'm stretching it. I'm stretching it. Yep. All right, as predicted, well, I'm going to pull it out anyway because I see that we have troubles. All right, let's pull it out. Okay, so here's the classic thing. When I talked about surface tension, you see that? Man, look at that thing. It is, it's fully, it's, you saw it. You saw how hard the resin is. Absolutely rock hard, but it's so thin. It's so paper thin. It's just incredibly, incredibly floppy. But this is a classic uh, of what's difficult to cast really thin parts. You just, it's really, really hard not to trap bubbles uh, in there. And so we're gonna do it again, but next, this time we're gonna try it with vac and see if we can vac it out of there. But you see, the good lesson here is that put, that was put under 50 pounds of pressure and it did not crush that bubble at all. Cool. All right, let's see if we can't make another one and make this one work better. Run it over to the vacuum tank. Let's run it into the pressure pot. Okay, what do you guys think? You think that uh, vacuuming did the trick this time? Let's see how we did it. Uh oh, uh, looks like maybe we got something better this time. Look at the difference that the vacuum made. Look at the hole in the first one and the other one uh, has no hole. Off camera, I cast several of these little pieces, and I can tell you that even with the vacuum, even with the pressure pots, uh, I consistently had problems not catching little pin bubbles here and there in the casting. And what that points to is what I have said over and over again, and will continue to say over and over again. This object was never designed to be resin cast. This is an injection molded object. It was cast under amazing pressure in a steel mold. So it was never designed to be cast in a silicone rubber mold with hand poured resin. Understanding the process will make it much easier for you to design pieces that can be successfully cast. Hey, I hope you got something out of this video and I hope you liked it. If you did, watch this video next and I will see you next time. Ah, <sighs> that dinky little guy. Look at that dinky little dude.